back to verse 15. It's hard to read the word and not start ministering. But today, God has given us a gift. Yes. Told the prophet Jeremiah, he says, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart. And I think this scripture is befitting on this morning because Pastor Moses, as I said before, has got the word of us. Humble me. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 No matter how many times he's been elevated or promoted, he stays the exact same way. Yeah. And if you ever mess around and call him or get him to answer his phone, <laughs> he's usually probably playing for somebody's church or down at his church doing something. But one of the most humble men I know, and I think he's a true picture of someone who has a heart after God. And he also understands that his responsibility is to feed the congregation of the flock with knowledge and understanding. Are you ready to eat? Yes. I'm going to ask that you please stand out of respect for the God of this great man of God. If you want to see fit to give unto us, as the word says, he's a gift. How do we show God how much we appreciate the gift that is displayed in how we take care of that which God has given to us? Amen? Amen. Well, Pastor, please come. We're so glad to have you and First Lady and Congress with us on today. Amen. Preach the word, teach the word, however God desires to use you. Amen. Flow freely. Amen. Congregation Pastor Jonathan Moses. to open my eyes and to stand on this side of the grass. Amen. Amen. Anybody glad? Yes. One day I'm going to try to wake up and not have the opportunity to wake up on this side. But I pray earnestly that when my eyes do open, that the one I see is the one that I have proclaimed to be victor in my life. Anybody hoping for that? I give honor to Pastor Smith, First Lady Smith. I'm thankful that Holy Commandment has journeyed to assist me on this day and support. Amen. First Lady Mosley. Amen. Amen. sing. It's an old song. But it's something that's vital that every believer 
has to accept. All right. yes. In trying to get things together, there's so many things that come to your mind. And this was the first song that I had written down. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood on me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. So I know it was the blood oh. a song we used to sing just about every Sabbath when I was growing up. It kept me thinking, kept me wondering, the blood? You don't hear too many people talking about the blood or the importance or the significance of the blood. Makes you wonder, is it necessary? What blood are you talking about? Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood. There is no remission of sin. So is blood necessary? Yes. Indubitably so. Yes. Blood is necessary. Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. We serve a just and a holy God. Yes. Amen. 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 So when he says it's necessary, it's necessary. Amen. It's so necessary he could not ignore sin. Not even in the garden. When Adam went to hide himself, sewed a few leaves together to cover himself. See, he was born without sin. Created without sin. So there was no need to cover. But when sin entered in, he tried to cover what he thought needed to be covered. And when God came to him in the cool of the eve, like we need to practice sometimes, instead of in our rage, calm down 
and then approach the one who needs to be approached. In the cool of the eve, and found out that they had, well, he knew what they had done, but he had to get confession. See, that's one thing people don't want to do is confess what they've done. Thank God for Pastor Michael Smith, amen, amen and his being open, amen. All have sinned yep. and come short of the glory of God. We may not all want to testify openly of some things that we have been involved with. But you have not escaped Amen. sin. Amen. Well, you were born in it. And you had nothing to do with it. All right. God had the first sacrifice, an animal. And he took the skin of the animal. You know you can't kick the, take the skin off of an animal unless you kill it. And sewed them together as covering for them in the garden. So God made the first sacrifice. Blood. Something had to die. In the Old Testament, I always say that the animal... Blood covering was just a band-aid. You can't make it too long with a band-aid if you've been cut wide open. It's just until you get where you can get help. We serve a just and holy God who would rather not ignore sin. There had to be consequences. However, as an act of mercy, God allowed a substitute to take the place of the sinner. This is in the Old Testament. He allowed them to take the blood. They were careful about bringing a sacrifice. You didn't just bring any old thing if you accept, you wanted to be forgiven. You wanted your sins to be uh, covered. I say it's temporary. So your sins were transferred into the animal that you died. So you were grateful, you were thankful that you had some other being to shed blood that you deserve to shed. So you didn't take it lightly. You were proud and happy and excited that you didn't have to carry that weight. So you found an animal that was worthy to die for the sin that you had committed. And his blood, its blood was shed for you on your behalf. It atoned for your sin. But we still kept on sinning. Kept on sinning. And animals kept on dying on our behalf. They had no choice. God allowed it to be. But we who are believer, it, believers accept God's word as our eternal guide. We know that it is his blood that atoned for our sins. Now we're on the other side of Christ. Christ said, I am the sacrificial lamb. And his blood was shed at the same time that the sacrificial lambs, natural lambs, were being sacrificed. For those who had not yet believed. See, they're still on the other side of the cross. Hoping that their, their sins would be covered. 
Christ said, I'm coming, that this doesn't have to happen anymore. The blood that I shed will cover the world. It's that powerful. He came from heaven to earth to do this specific thing. That we wouldn't have to worry about having to shed the blood of animals on our behalf. Can you imagine now today going to the market? How long the line would be to get a, a, a lamb or a dove to cover your sins for a year and then have to go back again? It'll be a year before you get your, 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 your little animal. But Christ said, I'm going to shed my blood on your behalf. And he said, once and for all, you don't have to do it anymore. He's the perfect man. He's the lamb without spot or blemish. There was nothing found in him that was spotable. That was tarnishable. He was perfect in every way. And we are commanded to follow the perfect one. An upright one. He died for you. He died for me. That we might live. Anybody glad about that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have to go and search out. Yeah. It'd be something if we had to raise our own animals. Amen. It would be a smelly situation. Amen. All these houses that's so close together. At least then they had spaces between the houses. Amen. But God has the ability to think about these things ahead of time. He knew that we were going to be like we are today. He knew that we would need a God, a Savior, because we couldn't do it ourselves. This was too hard a task. To continue. So it finished. Some cultures, well, Christ taught us that we should not uh, drink blood. Some cultures drink blood because they think that the blood, say that, that some of the Native Americans or Africans. They would catch a bull, lay hands on a bull, cut it, drink its blood, to think that they would gain power. The power that the bull had. Occults would take uh, uh, snakes and, and different things, animals, and sometimes even people's blood, human blood. And drink that and to think that they were going to get the power that dwelled in that thing that they killed, that shed blood. We don't have to worry about that. The Japanese take snakes and cut the head off and drink the blood as an aphrodisiac to enhance what they wanted to enhance. We don't have to do that. The blood, the purpose of the blood is to keep flesh alive. Until you get to the blood of Christ. That's to keep flesh crucified. See, I don't want my flesh to be shown. So when Christ was on the cross, the thorns were put in his head. His beard was plucked out. His, it, he was a bloody mess. Blood covered him. The sinful flesh. So that we can have a right to the tree of life. He shed his blood. So we didn't have to shed our blood. We deserve to die. Just like in the Old Testament, they deserve to die. 
But God made a way of escape. Something else could atone for their sins. But Jesus Christ atoned for ours. You got to believe it. If you don't believe it, you can't receive it. But when you receive it, you know that there's a difference. There's a difference in when you have faith to believe that he died for me. It's not just like your brother uh, standing up in front and, and somebody taking his life instead of yours. You still have to face me. But when Christ died for me, man can't do anything to me. Like Paul said, to live is Christ. To die is gain. I don't, I don't, I don't get out of here the same way because of the blood. The transformation that has been made in my life because of the blood is, is something that's uncomprehensible to the world. They can't comprehend why the blood of Jesus is so important. How can it be important? It, because of faith, you have to believe it. And I believe that he said he was dying for me. His blood was being shed for me. And all I have to do is believe. All I have to do is believe. And Passover makes you think about the first Passover. They had to put the blood on the outside, on the outside, for the death angel to go over. And we've been adopted into the family of God. It's no more... Jew, I thank God for the adoption. Amen. Amen. Adoption, you don't treat one that's not been adopted different from the one who has been adopted right. when you truly love them right. and that's you right. hold them dear to your life. That's right. God has adopted us yes. through Jesus Christ. Yes. And because of that adoption, he didn't want us to feel left out when celebration time was coming. See? When Passover comes, at the Last Supper, he changed things so that the world could be invited to this thing. See? I don't... I can eat the Seder, but I'm not obligated because... I didn't really go to Egypt. My Egypt is sin. So, at this time, he, after the supper was finished, he gathered them around and talked to them, washed his hands, washed their feet, took some bread, took some wine, told him to drink this. This is my blood. Some drink water, some drink grape juice, some drink wine, but it, it's representing the blood. He wants the blood to be applied on the inside, not just on the outside. When it's on the inside, you remember it more than you do when it's just on the outside. My Lord, my Lord. He wants to clean us from the inside out. Come on now. Yes. See, his blood washes clean. All right. Come on now. The blood of animals stained. All right. See, if I put the blood of animals on, on, on my head, uh, like they did to uh, Aaron and his sons, dip the finger in the blood and put some on your ear, and put some on your hand, and, and, and put some on your, your toe, and I walk around, and you don't know what's happening, you're going to look at me kind of strange. But when the blood is applied on the inside, 
nobody knows. That you can't really tell if I'm a believer or not just by me walking past you. But God knows. He knows when I have accepted what he has said. When I do what he has said. When I live the way he said I need to live. When I walk the way I need to walk. When I'm marking the perfect man. I want the blood to be applied on the inside. So at Passover time. I drink the blood and feel it on the inside. I have purpose for taking this because I want him to be a part of me and I want to be a part of him. I'm taking his blood. I'm a blood transfusion. That's what's happening. And then at other times, it, 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 when the sound of the trumpet it makes all of us aware. All of us are getting aware that uh, the end is coming. We've accepted the blood, so we're going to be watching as well as praying. We're, we're aware of what's happening in the time that we're living in because of the blood. The trumpet has been sounded. And we're reminded that Jesus atoned for us. So we need to get ready for the last feast, the feast of ingathering. If you didn't prepare at the beginning, you're not going to be ready at the end. So I want that blood to be absorbed into my very being. I want the just the, the knowledge that I have that it's him Amen. and it's his blood that I'm absorbing that I can live for him that he would direct me that he would guide me I need him Amen. I need him Amen. I thank God for the adoption process because he's not leaving anybody out. If you have an ear to hear, just come. Everybody has the invitation to come. He fixed it so that the same time we should all Celebrate the same at the same at the same time. Amen. Amen. So that your birthday is a special day. Yeah, it is. My birthday is a special day. We don't usually celebrate our birthdays at the same time. No. But events in our lives because of our deliverance. I thank God for Pentecost. Thank you, Lord. All of us can celebrate Pentecost. Yes. Feast of Weeks. Yes. But my Pentecost is different from your Pentecost. Yes. Because the day that I received him right. fully. Right. Amen. I, that's a time when I have rejoicing. Right. It's like my birthday. Amen. And I get excited every April 27th. All right. Amen. 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 Every April 27th. Amen. It's just an excitement time. The blood that gives me strength to make it from day to day. Amen. Never, ever loses his power. I'm thankful for the blood. All right. Amen. That's really all I can say. Is all right. I'm Amen. thankful for the blood. Amen. And every time I turn around, I, I look about, look at things. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
and see how it would be. Just think about how it would be if he had not died for us. And not shed his blood. If in the Garden of Gethsemane he changed his mind when he was praying and the drops of sweat fell like drops of blood. Three times the flesh cried out, let this cup pass. But he had a purpose. He wanted to die for Jonathan. Because Jonathan couldn't be good. Jonathan was sinful. He saw way back there in the garden. He died for individuals. He died for me. And I'm glad about that. I'm glad that I don't have to look for a dove. I like doves. But I don't want to kill a dove. Just to put my sins on him. That's really pretty selfish. You do your dirt. And then look for somebody else to take the blame. I thank God. Cain should have remembered the talk of his mother and father, how God sacrificed for them. Abel gave the sacrifice of life. Cain gave the sacrifice that would sustain life. We want to destroy this. Want this, our flesh life, to be under subjection. I want my will to be washed and suppressed and mortified and destroyed. My will to be just taken over. I want God to be manifested. I want his will to be manifested. I want his way to be just showing through my life. Amen. The way I walk, talk, everything. I just want to be his. Anybody looking to be totally his? Amen. Amen. I see some things in my life that still have to be covered with the blood. Amen. Amen. I see some things in my life that still need to be covered with the blood. It says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission, no forgiveness of sin. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be lost. So I take him at his word that he will receive me unto himself. I want to embrace him. And I want him to embrace me. He's not going to embrace sin. I want him to, when he looks at me, he sees the reflection of himself. And that could only be if I have received his blood from the inside. On the inside. I want to be clean from the inside. Yes. See, what's on the inside is what uh, makes the outside function. You don't see my brain. You don't see my heart. You don't see my, my, my organs. But you know they're working because yes. you see me moving. Yes. You hear me speaking. I need more of his blood. I want to be covered and filled, embodied with his blood. I want him to just overtake me, drench me. Amen. So much so that I die to my own self will. I want him to live.
else we may have on today. Pastor Jonathan Mosley. Thank you, sir. I am congregation. And I share this with you. So many times uh, the word comes forth. And um, we can kind of get used to certain subject matters. I hear our standard serving orders today. We can never hear enough about the blood. We can never hear enough about the blood. If you're familiar with Exodus chapter 12, you see God's grace and his mercy as pastor has already referenced it when starting the children of Israel and then being in Egypt. And I think it's such an appropriate scripture to talk about because we're kind of living in those, some of those same times right now. And we forget, once again, it really doesn't matter who is in the White House. What matters is who we're serving. And, and as Pastor was ministering and sharing, he started off singing and then went right into the Word of God. The Bible says, it was a clear reminder to me, the Bible says that uh, the way of the Lord is simple. And you know, when I stop to ponder and to, to just to meditate on that, it's us a lot of times who think ourselves right out of a blessing. So we look at Exodus chapter 12, you see here, I'm sure that there were people then, just like there are people right now, who've been in captivity, who have been in Egypt, a certain period of your life, and God has given you the recipe for success today. He's saying, pretty much, what are you doing with the blood? He's already shed it, but what are you doing with the blood? Because see, the blood doesn't do you any good unless you apply it. Pastor Mosley, thank you. I'm such an on time word. One more time, congregation. Let me bless the Lord for this morning. Amen. Thank you for such a dynamic service on today. Thank you for this divine appointment for Holy Commandment and the New Bethel and Bethel House of Yah to get together. Uh, Lord, you do all things well. Uh, thank you for sending Pastor Moses to remind us not to ever forget about the blood and how important the blood is, Father. And the fact that, Lord, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. We know, God, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank you for the remedy being Jesus Christ. Thank you for the solution to the problem being Yeshua the Messiah. God, I pray for a safe and traveling passage for all of us, whether we have come from right around the corner or across the Bay Bridge or whatever direction we came, God. Lord, we need you to take us back safely. Help us to arrive safely, Father, all things well. Father, those of us who are preparing to board a plane in several hours, God, give us safe and traveling passage and bring us back safe at the appointed time. Remember Elder Isaiah uh, embryo today, Father, as he's delivering the word. Give him safe passage coming back as well, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for the food we're about to receive for the nourishing of our bodies. I thank you for those that have committed to working in the kitchen uh, to ensure that we had a meal. Thank you, Father, for them and bless them richly. God, remember the saints, that the ministerial staff who desired to be a blessing to your manservant and my wife and maidservant, God. Thank you for blessing them richly, God. I, Father, I just pray that you would put a limitless blessing upon them and let them know how much we appreciate them, God. And we thank you so much for the love that's in this place. Thank you, God, again, for the breakthrough and the deliverance, Father, that has taken place. And thank you for the continued confession, helping us to understand the importance of our faith's confession, Lord Jesus. Again, Lord, we love you, we appreciate you, and we bless your name until we meet again as our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just hug somebody and say the blessing of the Lord be upon you. And uh, consider ourselves dismissed. <laughs>